Welcome to the Simply Vegan podcast from the team at Vegan Food and Living, the UK's best-selling vegan magazine. Every Tuesday, we taste test the newest vegan products, discuss the latest vegan news and answer your questions on everything from nutrition and supplementation to recipe ideas and dealing with negative backlash. Every Thursday, we speak to some of the leading names in veganism, from doctors and scientists to vegan chefs, celebrities and authors. Head to your platform of choice to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all the latest episodes. You can also listen to us on your smart speaker or on YouTube. And don't forget to leave us a review to help spread the word and help others on their plant-powered journey. Whether you're vegan for the animals, your health, the planet, or all of the above, it's important to protect your nutrient intakes. The Vegan Society's chewable multivitamin Veg1 is a convenient way to do so. Veg1 contains seven essential nutrients, including vitamins B12, D3 and iodine, and is packaged in a 100% plastic-free tin. A six-month supply is priced at just £12.70. That's around seven pence per day. And the best part is Vegan Food and Living Plus members get an extra 10% off. Browse the range at vegansociety.com forward slash veg1 and support the Vegan Society today. Welcome to the podcast, Chef Radley. Um, do you Thank want to you. tell us a bit about yourself, you know, when you discovered veganism and how you came to set up the Vegan Chef School? Yeah, well, I, I discovered veganism um, in 1995. Um, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, a long time ago. Um, I, I was at college and some of my friends were going to a protest against the live export of veal calves um and I didn't know anything about that at the time or you know how dairy was produced or anything like that like a lot of us you know really I I I was under the impression that cows just produced milk you know yeah. and so I went to this um I went to this protest and this little old lady who was like about that high I mean I'm only, I'm only five foot three so she was tiny Aww. um you know little old lady with like a like the tea cozy hat um gave me this flyer which in the first instance was amazing because she just didn't look like the media's portrayal of an animal rights activist which was fantastic and she gave me this flyer and it detailed on it the life of the dairy cow and the life of the male calf and it had this picture on it and it's a picture I will always remember where the cow's udder is so engorged that it hits the floor and it just like impacted me so much and I was at a really really great time for this message to be put in front of me you know I was at a time in my life when I was 17 and I was deciding what type of adult I wanted to be and I've always felt felt this really strong connection with animals and um you know if I see somebody get hurt in front of me like I feel that you know um and uh, yeah it just completely made sense to me to to go vegan overnight um you know I didn't want to be consuming any products or giving any money to something that I didn't believe in you know I definitely didn't want to put them into my body so um yeah just overnight I I went vegan and I had to teach myself how to cook basically (laughs) which was um you know quite a an education and and most of most of my training you know I'm self-taught really you know it was a lot of trial and error um and you know trying to like dig out the you know the only vegan cookbook that you could find in Waterstones at the time I mean now they've got like you know whole shelf I know I know we've come (laughs) so far haven't we yeah 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 absolutely absolutely and so you know I didn't know how to cook and I just had to kind of like make it up as I went along and um and I didn't ever consider it as a career because well you know there were hardly any vegans at that time so you know who are you going to cook for um but you know I just had it as like a, a you know a hobby and I actually went to art school and then I was in fashion and then and then uh I went and did my art history master's because I wanted a change from fashion and then I was like okay well where are the jobs in art history <laughs> yeah. there aren't really any <laughs> <laughs> So fun. 
funny, isn't it? You study these things and then it's like, yeah. oh, okay, now a career. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a very practical thing to do. Although, I, you know, I must say, like, I think, like, you know, university education, like, it really taught me to have more confidence on my own ideas. And, you know, that I will always be really, really grateful for. Um, and so I was looking around for something to do and I still did art and I was doing photography. And my photography was exhibited in the Brighton Photo Biennial uh, in, in a cafe. And the guy who ran the cafe talked to me about me being vegan. And he said, well, you know more about vegan food than me. Why don't you make cakes for the cafe? And so I did that just from home. And I absolutely fell in love with it. It was just amazing. Time stood still and went by really quickly at the same time. And now I know that that's what people called flow um and yeah I just I knew that it was what I had to do I didn't know how I was going to do it or if I could do it I just knew that I had to because I enjoyed the day-to-day of it but it was also it was also promoting something that I really believed in yeah that's I I feel so lucky to do my job as well because it just all aligns and it doesn't feel like work does it um, that's such a fantastic story. I love how everyone remembers what what made them go vegan and, and in such detail, you know, you remember the height of the little old lady and the exact <laughs> yeah. picture that you saw. But it's obviously yeah. so life changing, isn't it, when people have that light bulb moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so you've been a vegan chef for, for quite a few years now. Um, mm-hmm. How's vegan food changed since you started? <laughs> Oh, so much, so much. I mean, you know, of course, like you've got the the amount of options that are out there now. Um, you know, gone are the days where you just have to ask for like a chip butty without any butter on it, please. <laughs> <laughs> it. Or it was always risotto, wasn't it? The one thing on the menu. I mean, I don't know when. When did you start cooking as a chef? As a chef, ten years ago. Well, actually, years, um, yeah. yeah, twelve more like twelve years ago. Now, so so it has changed a lot, a lot. I mean, yeah, the chip party story was from you know when I when I used to live uh, up north in like ninety eight, I think wow. it was or something like that. It was it was pretty difficult to like actually go out and you know get food then. Um, but yeah, it had progressively got better, and then you know by the time you know I became a chef and I was living in Brighton, it was you know even better. Um, but yeah I mean like for um uh, like the stuff that you cook at home as well there's so much more variety with the ready-made food which is wonderful um it means that it's you know it's a lot more it just seems a lot more possible yeah to a lot of people because you know we live in a country where where um cooking from scratch every day is kind of rarity really I mean that's something that obviously like I'm trying to help uh make better um you know not just like with the vegan stuff but you know just you know showing people like how easy it is because with with a lot of my courses like I get a lot of people who aren't vegan you know and just showing them like how do you how do you like cook from scratch but make it really you know kind of like quick and easy and you know not take loads of time and energy and that type of thing um you know so those those options are great um but I think just like the knowledge, you know, the knowledge that we're all sharing with each other, you know, the fact that this has come about with the rise of the Internet where, um, you know, we can we can create a cuisine so much more quickly now because there are people across the world that are experimenting and then they're sharing their experiments online and then other people are taking those experiments and changing them and adapting them and that type of thing. So it's an amazing time, like so much is happening and so quickly as well, um, that it's absolutely, it's, it's phenomenal. But I think like the next stage is making vegan food um, as good or if not better than existing cuisine and showing that we can do absolutely everything that it has, you know, that, that non-vegan cuisine has, and then some, because there's a huge amount of creativity within it. And also we're kind of um, free of any kind of the shackles of traditional food, you know, like in some cultures, like, you know, a dish is made a certain way and it's been made like that for the last 200 years. And if you don't cook it like that, then it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Whereas in veganism, like, it's like, 
we, we can just have as much creativity as we want. I think that's one of the things that surprised me actually when I went vegan is and it, it actually really appeals to my sort of creative nature is sort of that experimental side of you know make like making scrambled egg from tofu and just crazy things like that that are just they're so simple to do but if you don't know how to do it then it's kind of alien isn't it um, yeah. and I just think I just think it's really exciting cooking you know in that way um, what are some of your favorite fish dishes to cook uh well I love making gluten-free pasta really 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 love it um and it's actually like relatively easy to do in fact it's the it's the first dish on the chef course is tortellini which right. you know my students are a bit like quite scared about <laughs> yeah uh, yeah it's one thing I've never done made pasta yeah and gluten-free pasta as well and stuffed so you know it is quite a challenge for them but it's something that once you get the hang of it and you know what it's meant to feel like and you've got that sense of touch you know then you can make it brilliant every time um so it's a really good lesson in that because I think like the 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 sense of touch is something that we don't really engage with as much you know so it's really good it teaches them that but um I also love making French patisserie. So like lemon tarts and, um, you know, that type of thing is, is really, really fun to make. Lovely. Do you need like a pasta machine to do the pasta? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. But you can pick one up for like 15 quid that is fine and that does the job. Yeah. Once job. you've got it, then you can just use it for yeah. years and years, can't you? Yeah. OK, well, I must um, check that course out because I'd be really interested to learn how to do that um the patisserie yeah I don't think that's um so me I think that's more sort of thing <laughs> my mum might might do I'm just terrible at anything like that I sort of more of a chuck it all in type person so <laughs> yeah yeah so I always find that there are two types of um students that I have so students that follow a recipe meticulously and yeah they're really good at like the patisserie and the baking um and then students who are more creative and they're the students that when I was doing the in-person classes during a class I would find them in the dry store cupboard because they're trying to find like different ingredients that they can chuck in and I'm like just stick to the recipe (laughs) (laughs) just try the recipe as it's meant to be and then when you try it yourself at home then you can be creative yeah (laughs) (laughs) don't insult me by trying to change my recipe right here when I'm (laughs) but how are you gonna know yeah it's so true I know I just I I basically I get a recipe I skim read it and then I go yeah I can do that and as long as I've got the sort of similar ingredients then I'll just kind of (laughs) chuck it all in and and I'd say eight or nine times out of ten it works but there is that that sort of little um bit of room for error (laughs) it's just a disaster (laughs) and you're like what is this (laughs) well you'd be really good at recipe developing then because it's always always those students that are really good at um recipe developing oh okay perhaps I could have a little side hustle when I'm not doing (laughs) the podcast (laughs) I need to improve my food photography though because I'm terrible at that (laughs) yeah well nowadays that's something that chefs need to be good at as well yeah so you can't just like make good food it also has to look really pretty this is it there's no point sharing it if it tastes amazing but it just looks like a pile of brown stuff yeah (laughs) (laughs) um do you try and cook with like seasonal and local ingredients then oh yeah definitely definitely um sometimes when you're recipe developing that can be a little bit tricky because for example if you're developing Christmas recipes in June (laughs) (laughs) but that is the life of a chef quite often like when you're doing those types of um developments but yes on a day-to-day basis as seasonal you know um and as local as I can make it I mean I live in Sussex so I'm quite fortunate you know with that so yeah it's something I've only actually started to do this year really through the Riverford boxes Mm -hmm. and I just absolutely love it it's it's funny isn't it once you start doing it there's sort of no going back because you kind of I don't know I'm like looking at things that are out of season in a recipe Mm -hmm. just feels wrong to kind of cook with them and Yeah. yeah Riverford are great Riverford are really really great um we've worked with those on a few occasions actually so my chef students they have to do recipe development projects 
and in the first course they did a recipe development project with Riverford um where they had to design the meal kit right okay and then the one that won actually went into production oh that's fantastic is, such a good yeah, idea yeah really, really amazing and yeah what Riverford do are, are really really phenomenal I've been lucky enough to be shown around the farm and the bitter leaves oh, when lovely. they're in the season um so yeah if you can make it down there if they if you know they're doing tours again it's really really fascinating oh I'd love to do that that's a really good idea I'll have to drop them an email yeah. um for new vegans who are sort of really daunted I know you talked um a minute ago about cooking from scratch mm-hmm. um for yeah anyone who's new to veganism uh, who's a bit daunted by it what tips would you give to them well um I would say start with what you know and make simple swaps. So, you know, if there's a certain style of food that you like making certain dishes, then carry on making them and then just swap out the meat thing for, you know, either like a soya based product or, you know, a vegetable. So say, for example, like, you know, a bolognese, you can make it with with mushrooms or you can make it with, you know, soya pieces like that type of thing. And then start to broaden out. That usually goes from, you know, most people. That that means that you're kind of like doing it in baby steps, really. Yeah. And I think like when it comes to the type of food that we like, a lot of us do like what we know and what we're familiar with. Um, so just like start from those like central things that, you know, you know, and you know, you cook well as well, and then just swap those things out. And quite often when you are making those swaps, it's actually quicker to cook with the vegan ingredients anyway because you know you don't have like the time that it takes to cook meat out or you know dairy or whatever yeah you don't get those um horrible like plastic containers that are left with like all the blood at the bottom do you oh. remember you probably don't even remember it because you've been vegan so long but oh it's just <laughs> like yeah I just had like a flashback to <laughs> preparing yeah. meat yeah. trying to cook yeah. up chicken horrible. with those sort of bits of tendons in and ooh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't have all that to deal yeah with. exactly. It's <laughs> so much better. Mm-hmm. Um, what what about store cupboard staples like cheat cheat ingredients that aren't necessarily unhealthy, but they're just you know really handy to have in the cupboard? What what? Well, so I would say it depends on your food preferences, really. So if you like cheese, nooch, definitely oh, yeah. a big tub of nutritional yeast. If you yeah. like cheesy. Uh, the taste of you know cheesy food then you definitely have to have nutritional yeast um uh you need the right type of milk for a decent cup of tea (laughs) definitely (laughs) I think that that is very very important and if you like meaty dishes then yeast extract so you might know it's marmite or vegemite um but you can get it you know just as a yeast extract not made by those companies um and that you know has like a real like savory saltiness and so I add that to things like you know burgers sausages chilies you know anything that has to be quite meaty um and that's quite good for people who also are used to um you know eating a lot of meat and being very kind of like full you know that fullness some people like miss that definitely so things like hearty chilies and sausages and burgers would be really good for those types of people yeah I've um recently picked up some black olive tapenade oh, nice. um and I've had that and I, that's great because you can put it with pasta or make mm. like a dip or I even put it in like a sandwich earlier yeah with <laughs> yeah, it's really really lovely yeah I think I just love the saltiness <laughs> I'm a salt addict. Um, one of your courses focuses on nutrition, doesn't it? So what kind of things yeah. does it cover? So uh, we actually developed the course with a nutritionist um, from plant-based health professionals. Um, oh, yeah, yeah we great. work with them a lot on the show. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant to have an organisation like that in the UK as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the, the course is set out into three sections. So the first two sections are nutrition knowledge. And um, so, you know, an introduction to plant based eating and then going into it in a lot more detail, you know, all the different kind of vitamins and minerals, macronutrients, like that type of thing. But then the third section, so the third section is the one that I developed, and that actually gets students to take the knowledge that they've learned in the first two sections and then 
apply it to creating recipes and menus and meal plans um, and teaching students, you know, well, um, you know, how do you take take into consideration um, if people need food that is more filling or people need food that has the, you know, more of like a fatty taste because if they're used to like a high butter, you know, cream diet, how do we replicate that? Um, You know, what questions do you ask uh, to clients, you know, um, to kind of like try to figure out what type of food that they do really like, because really you speak to a lot of people and they say, yeah, I like everything. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> We're all quite particular, but you need like, you know, these like questionnaires to really like tease that out of people. And so, so the course is really built for people who either you know want to do personal or private chefing or their chefs who might work with restaurants to develop menus for them or that type of thing but we also get a lot of home cooks doing it because they want to be able to do that for themselves really at home yeah yeah it's you always sort of worry slightly don't you that you're covering all the bases yeah it sounds like a great course actually so are you a qualified nutritionist at the end of it no 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 well I mean it's important to say that in the UK, um, you can call yourself a nutritionist. You don't have to do any course whatsoever. It isn't like a restricted title at all, right, which is okay. a scary thing. Yes. So if you see, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, the term dietitian is different. So to call yourself a dietitian, you have to do um, a recognized course. And that's usually you know, like a three year degree type course. But you can also find you know, nutritionists who say that they're registered nutritionists and they will have like done like proper courses um so really to be a nutritionist in my book you need to go and do like a three-year full-time course you know so this isn't that but this kind of like fills the gap for um people who work in food who need to know a certain type of knowledge a certain amount of knowledge but they don't need to know as much as a nutritionist needs to know And so there are so many people in the industry now who are asked to create um, uh, create a menu for a restaurant that is, you know, healthier or, um, you know, that type of thing or um, clients. I mean, I've mainly worked as a private chef and there are so many more clients now who want um, a health focused chef. Um, which is is also (laughs) plant-based as well which is really 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 good really good but of course like there's a lot of knowledge out there on the internet but it's a bit kind of chaotic and you don't know what to trust and what not to trust and so the course just kind of like puts um, really good knowledge from very good resources in a specific order to start with you know the an introduction and then build it through to this conclusion of okay now you actually can put all this knowledge into practice yeah brilliant do you um we get a lot of questions from vegans who worry about um getting the right nutrition what advice would you give to them I'd say firstly don't panic (laughs) um so many people like me have been vegan for a long time and we're very very healthy um and then secondly I would say eat the rainbow so there are eat the rainbow is a phrase um, that a lot of nutritionists use which means you know eat a variety of colors in your diet Um, but for me what that really highlights is that we can we can have these kind of like broad strokes these like broad rules for how we eat you know and having like a, a variety of um fresh fruits vegetables nuts seeds grains pulses in your diet that are preferably home cooked then you'll be fine yeah. you'll be fine for the majority of um you know healthy adults if you have specific health complaints then yes it would be good for you to get um get the advice of a registered nutritionist or a dietitian really if you've got you know something that you know um you know some sort of ailment then it's better it's better to ask them you can also go to your doctor and ask for a blood test if you're worried and that's something that I did for a few years um but it kept coming back fine so yeah <laughs> stop sometimes it's just that paranoia isn't it it's like I felt a bit tired yesterday am I getting enough b12 (laughs) 
but it's crazy because we know we're healthy but I think just living in a non-vegan world you sometimes yeah. just um feel I don't know you sometimes just doubt yourself don't you but um yeah I think it's all about variety what yeah. sort of what yeah, sort yeah. of food do you eat personally do you sort of cooking all day and then get home and you're like I don't want to cook again or because my dad was a chef so um I know that everyone always thought we had amazing meals but we didn't because he was cooking all day <laughs> you'd get home and it would be like Finder's crispy pancakes and mash or... <laughs> oh wow that's a blast from the past <laughs> I know well, it, this was the 80s early 90s so <laughs> With those orange breadcrumbs yes yeah. and like <laughs> like lava hot filling <laughs> yeah well, nowadays I work from home on a full time basis, so I'm recipe developing in our kitchen. So basically, we get to eat what I've made. So the other day, I texted my fiance and I was like, "It's Ferrero Rocher for dinner. Is that okay? Because <laughs> that's what I've been making all day." <laughs> it's like I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so so we do eat well we're eating a lot of Christmas stuff at the moment because I am developing all our Christmas recipes um which is wonderful if somewhat filling um but I do a lot a lot of one pot dishes as well so if I haven't been recipe developing that day then um you know I like chuck a load of stuff into a pot add some hot water you know let it bubble away and that's it and there is so many dishes that you can make like that it is absolutely phenomenal as long as like you learn you know the basic rules of you know how big like different veggies should be cut so that they cook to the same amount of time and yeah. you know that type of thing but it is it is really really super easy yeah I'm I'm very much sort of chuck it all in quick because but you know but I've got to pick up kids then do a bit more work yeah. then get tea ready for them so it has to be fast and I do cook from scratch most of the time actually and I'm quite amazed at some of the meals I managed to throw together <laughs> but um yeah th- there are nights where it's vegan pizza or <laughs> well that's fine you know that's that's you know it's a good it's a good meal and also it's good it's good to give yourself treats like that as well you know yeah. and not to feel like you have to be puritanical about food so exactly yeah. um as we're coming up for the Christmas season I just thought I'd quickly ask you to throw this in here sorry <laughs> um okay. what, what what will your Christmas day look like what sort of food will you be eating well I've just recently developed an uh, I'm I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to call it. For the moment, I'm calling it a, a hazelnut, hazelnut and sage crown. Ooh, and so it's like a hazelnut nut, nut loaf, but I've made it into a circle shape with a dip in, in the middle of it. And then on top, it has lots of roasted um, vegetables, including uh, radish, uh, small carrots, um sprouts of course obviously um, and broccoli but it's all so uh bright and you know I really wanted to create something that was like that showed the abundance and vibrancy of yeah. vegan food yeah rather than something brown like lentil yeah or nut yeah. roast yeah well exactly so the nut roast itself is brown but it's got all this beautiful um you know mini mini roasted vegetables on top of it and around it and then you pour the gravy on it and the gravy like goes down the side and it looks oh, lovely wow. um amazing. <laughs> yeah so I think we're going to be having that uh for Christmas dinner and then probably far too many side dishes yeah uh, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Can, uh, will you be sharing that recipe on your social media or anything yes definitely definitely yeah, yeah. and not quite yet apparently I have to like hold my horses with right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm all ready for Christmas now I'm like I think working in the media you're all you know you have like Christmas in July don't you with all the media press releases and things and you're yeah. sort of planning ahead for your the magazine or podcast or whatever so yeah I'm sort of fully in Christmas zone whereas I'm aware a lot of people are probably still yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too me too I mean I'm going to be on to Valentine's recipes soon really so. yeah <laughs> okay so what is your um handle chef day radley or is it vegan chef school it's the vegan chef school brilliant okay. yeah everywhere and just to finish off um there's so many vegan restaurants opening I'm presuming that vegan chefs are quite in demand aren't they yeah they really really are so for anyone yeah. wanting to go into this area of work or perhaps thinking you know could it be for me what kind of time and money is required to train 
Okay, so well, there are a few courses out there now, including mine, um, and they all kind of like vary in time commitment. So, you know, it's good to see what's out there and then find the one that suits you because, um, you know, some of the courses you have to be online at a certain time. Like with my course, it's all pre recorded because we have students in different time zones, and the course can take a minimum of 12 weeks if you get yourself sorted and you get all of those ingredients ready and you know ordered and that type of thing then it can take you know as little as three months to do um one day a week that is okay. so it isn't a huge amount of time um and then um yeah the money that's involved I mean our our chef course goes for um I think 975 now um and then you've got the cost of the ingredients and that type of thing um but I would say that if you are considering going into working as a vegan chef see if you can test it out first you know see if you can get you know a bit of work experience in um in a cafe or a restaurant and see how you feel about it um that said you know you don't always have to go and work in cafes and restaurants so I try to get my students to think about other options as well because as I mentioned you know I was I've been mainly a private chef I was a private chef for, for uh five six years uh but you can do catering as well but it is good to kind of like dip your toe in because yeah. I don't think you really know what a job is going to be like until you actually like you know test it out um and so on the chef course we do actually do internships for our students as well we we organize internships in fact we we did actually have a student who recently did her internship at riverford oh wow which she said was absolutely amazing oh, really I'd really amazing that yeah that's so cool yeah i um I grew up sort of in the hospitality industry because my grandparents and my aunt and uncle owned a a big hotel in um, the local seaside town. And Mm -hmm. I used to do chambermaiding. Then I did waitressing for years and years and years. I just always remember the chefs shouting at me and and being extremely hot in the kitchen. (laughs) That's what what I always think of when I think of chefing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. There can be some kitchens like that, but thankfully they're not all like that. Yeah. (laughs) it's hard work isn't it but a fantastic yeah fantastic area to work in yeah well chef radley you've been amazing thank you so much for joining us and um thank you well i hope to catch up with you again in the future yeah yeah and have a good christmas yeah happy christmas (laughs) (laughs) we're there i'm literally ready for it i'm ready for my um my hazelnut and uh what was it time <laughs> sage, hazelnut, sage, and sage brown. Yeah. yeah. Yum. <laughs> well, that's it from us for this week. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave us a review on your platform of choice. It really does mean so much to us to hear back from you and it helps us to keep going with the podcast. Um, you can also email us at simplyvegan at anthem.co.uk with your questions. Um, I'll be back with Molly on Tuesday and next Thursday I'll be chatting to Heather Small from M People and Suni Patel all about gut health.